dear students in this lecture we will learn regarding population inversion metastable states and other important concepts related to lasers first we will see steady state condition in the previous classes we have learnt stimulated absorption spontaneous emission stimulated emission all these three processes occur together with a balance between absorption and emission at thermal equilibrium spontaneously emitted photons can induce stimulated emission from another excited atom this property you can see in case of helium neon laser it is also likely to be absorbed by lower level atoms higher probability of this occurrence because of large population of n1 where n1 is the population density of ground state population density means number of atoms in that energy state here e1 represents ground state energy population density of excited state is n2 the excited state means the energy state which is having energy greater than energy of ground state here population density of excited state is n2 this picture depicts all the three processes important features of stimulated emission it is control controllable from outside the emitted photon propagates in same direction as that of stimulating photon this is as shown in this diagram and they have exactly same frequency same phase and same plane of polarization that means they are coherent with each other light produced is directional coherent and monochromatic this is the property of laser photons produced by stimulated emission have a definite phase relationship producing coherent light this one i have explained in the previous class as in the name suggests light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation till now we have learnt about stimulated emission now we will see where the light will amplify amplification is the process of increasing the strength of a signal or in this case amplification represents multiplication of photons if we are giving input as single photon we are getting in the output many photons this is the meaning of amplification this is depicted in the picture here all the photons are in phase with each other and travel in same direction all the coherent waves interfere constructively and the resultant amplitude is continuously growing that means resultant amplitude is increasing continuously therefore resulting light is the amplified light and they have high intensity because of constructive interference of waves net intensity of the resultant light is proportional to square of the number of atoms emitting light therefore total intensity is equal to n square into i where n represents the number of atoms total intensity is depending upon r it is proportional to square of the total number of atoms and their intensities the necessary condition for laser to occur is population inversion laser operation requires obtaining stimulated emission exclusively as already i mentioned stimulated emission is the first necessary property for a laser or first necessary condition for laser 
to achieve a high percentage of stimulated emission majority of atoms should be at the excited energy level than at the ground energy level look at this picture at normal condition the number of atoms present in the ground state energy level are higher than the excited energy state this picture clearly depicts it here if i say n1 is the population density of ground state energy level e1 and n2 is population density of excited state energy level it clearly shows that n1 is greater than n2 at normal condition now population inversion means population density of excited energy state should be greater than population density of ground state energy state that means n2 should be greater than n1 this is the population inversion the non equilibrium state in which the population n2 of the upper energy level exceeds to a large extent the population n1 of the lower energy level is known as the state of population inversion simply i can say n2 should be greater than n1 or n2 should be greater than n1 divided by 2 the number of atoms present in the excited energy state should be greater than half of the number of atoms in the ground state energy at normal condition this process is called as population inversion that means here the number of atoms at energy level e2 is greater than number of atoms at energy level e1 in the ground state at or at thermal equilibrium in the previous slide i have explained for a two state system here i am considering three state system that is for a system with three energy levels e1 e2 and e3 in equilibrium the uppermost level e3 is populated least and the lowest level e1 is populated most that means n1 is greater than n2 is greater than n3 which is shown in this picture n1 is greater n2 is slightly less than n1 and n3 is less than n2 obviously it is less than n1 if the system is supplied with external energy such that n2 exceeds n1 that means n2 population density of energy state e2 or excited energy level increases and it reaches n1 and it slightly increases greater than n1 then we can say we have achieved population inversion population inversion taken place between the levels e2 and e1 here this picture depicts population inversion of e2 with respect to e1 here n2 is greater than n1 the first few randomly emitted spontaneous photons trigger stimulated emission of more photons and those stimulated photons induce still more stimulated emissions and so on this is as explained earlier light amplification process it will in turn increase the stimulated emissions finally in order to get lasing action as long as n2 is greater than n1 stimulated emissions are more likely than absorption therefore light gets amplified this is all about population inversion process now we will see another important concept metastable states an atom can be excited to a higher energy level by supplying energy to it by means of optical energy or electrical energy etc normally excited states have shorter lifetimes the lifetime of that excited state it is in the order of nanoseconds that is 10 to the power minus 9 seconds and after lapsing of that time 
they will be transit to the ground state by the emission of light by spontaneous emission process atoms do not stay at such excited states long enough to be stimulated to emit their energy though the pumping agent continuously raises the atoms to the excited level many of them rapidly undergo spontaneous transition to the lower energy level andre ground state in the excited state ge hogirtakanta atoms galu 10 to the power of minus 9 seconds varike matra alli iddo again they will come to ground state by the spontaneous emission process they will not be involved in the lasing action or they will not undergo stimulated emission process population inversion cannot be established in this scale for establishing population inversion the excited atoms are required to wait at the upper lasing level till a large number of atoms accumulate at that level andre normal state alli n2 is less than n1 agirutte adre population inversion agbeku andre en artha n2 should be greater than n1 agbeku aa condition satisfy agbeku antandre ee normal condition alli adu sadhya agodilla now adakke stimulated emission aagu rite norkobekagutade what is needed is an excited state with a longer lifetime stimulated emission aagbeku antandre 10 power minus 9 seconds kinta jaasti time excited state nalli atoms galu ulkobeku avu spontaneous emission mukantra ground state ge hogbardu hangadre adu yen maadabodu navu such longer lived upper levels from where an excited atom does not come to lower level at once but remains excited for an appreciable time or known as metastable states a excited state to lifetime and the atom the lifetime excited state alli 10 power minus 9 seconds ant en helide adikinta jaasti time irtakanta energy state ondidre alli atoms galu thumba ottidre now avanna stimulate maadabodu avaga stimulated emission process aagu reethi anta energy level so longer lifetime ondirtakanta energy levels na naavu meta stable states anta karithivi nodi illi ee picture nalle naavu represent maadidivu adanna this meta stable state lies between e1 state and e3 state here this e3 is pumping level that means this is the excited state e1 is the ground state this meta stable state it has a longer lifetime this e2 state which has longer lifetime is called as meta stable state these atoms in the excited energy level e3 can rapidly decay by to the meta stable state this process will also occur now atoms stay in meta stable states for about 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds to 10 to the power of minus 3 seconds that means as compared to lifetime of excited state that is 10 power minus 9 seconds this lifetime of meta stable state is very longer that is it is 10 power 3 to 10 power 6 times longer than the time of stay at excited levels lifetime of meta stable state it is in the order of 10 power minus 3 seconds therefore it is possible for a larger number of atoms to accumulate at a meta stable level the meta stable state population can exceed the population of a lower level and lead to the state of population inversion if the meta stable states do not exist there could be no population inversion no stimulated emission and hence no laser operation foundation to the laser operation is the existence of meta stable state therefore we can conclude with the stimulated emission and population inversion 
metastable states presence of metastable states are also necessary condition for lasing action now we will see pumping methods we need pumping of atoms from ground state to the excited state in order to achieve stimulated emission there are many pumping methods to create the state of population inversion selectively excite the atoms in the material to particular energy level this is the process of pumping most common methods of pumping makes up makes use of light and electrons when we use light it is called as optical pumping it uses photons to excite the atoms in the ground state a light source used to illuminate the laser medium photons of appropriate frequency excite the atoms to upper levels atoms will transit to the metastable state to create the state of population inversion as ex explained earlier there are uh, plenty of sources for optical pumping flash discharge tubes continuously operation lamps spark gaps are an auxiliary laser optical pumping is suitable for laser medium it is transparent to pump light it is mostly used for solid state crystalline and liquid tunable dye lasers that means in case of solid state lasers and liquid tunable dye lasers the process of pumping is optical pumping another one is electrical pumping it can be used only in case of laser materials that can conduct electricity without destroying lasing activity and this pumping process is limited to gas lasers in case of a gas laser a high voltage pulse initially ionizes the gas so that it conducts electricity an electric current flowing through the gas excites atoms to the excited level from where they drop to the metastable state leading to population inversion next one is direct conversion in semiconductor lasers also electrical pumping is used but here it is not the atoms that are excited it is the current carriers or charge carriers that means electron and hole pairs which are excited and a population inversion is achieved in the junction region between n and p semiconductors electrons recombine with holes in the junction region producing laser light that means direct conversion of electrical pumping is used in semiconductor lasers a direct conversion of electrical energy electrical energy into light energy occurs in this case these are all the some of the pumping methods now we will see another important concept active centers or active medium which is necessary to imbibe lasing action all types of atoms are not suitable for laser operation we cannot get lasing or we cannot get laser light from all the elements or uh, or the compounds in a medium consisting of different species of atoms or different type of atoms only a small fraction of atoms of a particular species are suitable for stimulated emission and laser action those atoms which cause light amplification are called active centers that means the atoms which involve in light amplification process are called as active centers rest of the medium acts as a host and it supports active centers is called as active medium an active medium is thus a medium which when excited it reaches the state of population inversion eventually causes light amplification active medium may be a solid a liquid or a gas
finally i conclude population inversion stimulated emission presence of metastable states and presence of active center and active medium these are all the necessary conditions in order to achieve a lasing action thank you